Hey everybody, it's me, Loki! What? You don't recognize me? Well, I might be a Loki variant, but I'm definitely a Loki because I'm wearing green and I have horns. Don't you see my horns? <laughs> and also everything's green. And also, I'm clearly a man. And that's apparently really important to being a Loki because Lokis can only be men. Hey everyone, uh, this is my Loki video. Uh, I've made videos on all the other Disney Plus Marvel shows and um, I think they're pretty good. Uh, my videos as well as the shows, but um, I don't like Loki. I think Loki's kind of bad. And uh, this video is about how I think Loki's kind of bad. Loki is a very surprising show. From the moment of its announcement, the gates were open to all kinds of speculation on what was going to happen in it. Different from the other two series in Marvel's original lineup, WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier, it didn't really leave us with any kind of setup, journey or goal for the character. And with a crazy setup like Loki, it truly could have gone anywhere. That's exactly why I'm so surprised that the show is just kinda... Boring? <laughs> First of all, for a show that seemingly promised a large adventure spanning across realities, timelines with lots of fun and typical low-key trickery, the show never really lives up to this promise. This could have been Marvel's magnum opus. No, really, I truly believe that. I imagine it to be this crazy time and space spanning adventure along the lines of The Mandalorian, for example. <laughs> it's a good show, just with time travel. But I guess that's not what Marvel saw, since it never even gets close to that scope. We spent most of the time in the TVA, the offices of the Time Cops that arrested Loki in the first episode. This set is actually great. I love the 60s inspired retro futurism of it all. And it's a place rich in atmosphere and mystery. But as pretty as it is, it feels incredibly stale in its relationship to the plot. There only ever is one place in which the characters may find out something about the plot, and that's the Chamber of the Timekeepers, the leaders of the organization, which turns out to be a dead end anyway. Other than the TVA, there is only really two other locations that are explored in depth, and one of these is a seemingly randomly picked purple planet with no significance to the plot on which we spent more than an entire episode on during the mid-stretch of the show. By the way, I found out that this is apparently a set from Doctor Who, so they just kind of recycled a Doctor Who set for an entire episode. <laughs> Marvel, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, of course, the creators aren't dumb, however. Whenever they grind the plot's progression and pacing to a halt, the characters are supposed to grow and develop, but they don't. Not really, at least. Except for maybe Loki. But the problem with Loki's character development in this show is that it is nothing we haven't seen before. Loki, if you've seen some of his Marvel movies, uh, throughout the movies themselves has already made the leap from villain to anti-hero and given us lots of powerful, funny and interesting moments that gave the character more depth, aligning him more with his portrayal in the comics. Before the show was released then, it seemed that the events of the show would give him ample opportunities to develop uh, in lots of new directions, or even more antagonistic ones. But the show never does that. Instead, Loki is shown a short movie recap of his life and tragedies, which is supposed to give him a head start towards being a hero. Even though that wasn't really what he ended up being in the movies anyway, but okay. In the same episode, the show also shamelessly recycles a metric ton of footage from the other movies, which sort of should be illegal at this point. <laughs> Making me wonder if there's an actual point to the clip show, since Loki himself gives no real indication of how seeing his own death makes him feel, except for, you know, sad. Other than that, the only character that left an impression on me is the disarmingly charming Miss Minutes, portrayed by the voice acting legend Tara Strong. This overly optimistic mascot for an oppressive time bureau is funny and quirky in all the right ways, but I digress. The show seems to be highly confused as to its tone and structure. We'll talk about tone again in the next section, but if this is supposed to be a time crime mystery, there's way too much action and not enough focus on the solving of the central mystery for it to keep being interesting. But if this is supposed to be a more classic MCU show with a focus on action and spectacle, it also fails in that regard. 
The fights seem superfluous, as the characters most of the time don't even really have a good reason to be attacking each other. There's basically just one fight with actual tension and character motivation behind it, and Loki is not even involved in it. Add to that that Loki's opponents are always just mindless thugs and soldiers that add nothing interesting to the fight. Additionally, Loki does so incredibly poor in most of the fights that he's involved in that it truly makes you question his competence. Getting beaten up by random humans, screwing up his magic abilities in crucial moments, and most hilariously just getting straight up thrown out of a window by a couple dudes only to use his powers to lift a giant tower crumbling on top of him in the same episode. People often say that the Scarlet Witch's biggest flaw as a character is that we never really know what she's capable of, making her both vulnerable and overpowered whenever the story requires. But Loki is even guiltier of this, in his own show especially. It just disconnects me from any action scene he's in instantly, along with spending way too much time in the same location and no further place for the characters to go. I just don't really care what happens in the show at any given time. Oh, but the music is fantastic. It really sells the atmosphere of both settings and events perfectly. It sounds weird and mysterious and at the same time fun and playful. I've become a huge fan of Natalie Holtz. So that was quickly why I think the show is boring. Why do I think it's bad? Well, that may be split up into three parts. The writing in Loki, especially in regards to its characters, feels childish. Now hold on a second, I know I'm talking about the show in the MCU, a franchise that is and always will be ostensibly catered towards children. But, when you compare Loki to, say, Falcon and Winter Soldier, it sort of pales in comparison to how much you can take the characters and plots seriously. Falcon and Winter Soldier did this through the recurring plot of the Falcon and his sister struggling to find financial stability, and hell, even WandaVision managed to ground its characters through dealing with grief. But Loki doesn't ever give you an emotional core to latch onto like that. Because the show itself is just too superficial to achieve that, both with its plot, characters, and internal logic. Character-wise, this is most apparent in Loki himself. His journey in the show just boils down to realizing that he's just kind of an ass and wanting to change that. Previously mentioned problems aside, this is treated with an expedient amount of immaturity in the show. He is, especially in the later episode, just portrayed as a harmless trickster rather than a deeply flawed person, which conveniently glosses over his previous attempts at genocide in an effort to make him more kid-friendly, I guess. <laughs> and I mean, sure, the movies also glossed over this due to the sheer popularity of the character, but in those, there was at least years in between genocide Loki and anti-hero. Loki. In the show, this happens in a span of like two days. But this childish attitude is also a problem in every single other character. Owen Wilson's Mobius becomes unbearably naive and toothless the longer the show goes on. We're supposed to believe him to be this genius time detective, yet he never gets a chance to prove himself or have impact through the usage of his skills. In the end, his most prevalent trait is liking and believing in Loki, robbing him of all other agency. Even the villains of the show are needlessly cartoonish and cruel, mocking, manipulating and outright laughing at the suffering of the Loki variants, which just makes them so overblown and unbelievable. Judge Renslayer, for example, is apparently not faced at all by the fact that her entire life and career is just a lie and blindly pledges allegiance to, uh, she doesn't even know who to! Are you dumb? Your bosses are literally just fake animatronics, why do you not care? <laughs> Next up, the plot is just way too damn simple. The whole story is summed up in just a couple of sentences without losing anything important. Loki is arrested by the evil-looking time police to find another version of himself. He finds that version that tells him the evil-looking time police, which we never really liked or trusted anyway, are evil and they go to stop it. All of this could have literally just have been a rather short movie and maybe at some point it was. But there really isn't just enough to sink your teeth into here. The only questions the viewer gets to ask is the ones the show explicitly asks itself. There's no intrigue to be found. This simplicity doesn't feel befitting of a modern TV show at all, and is much more adequate for a kid's show. But this gripe may as well just be another consequence of extensive rewrites. The first two episodes are 
somehow much darker, especially in setting up the Loki variant our Loki is supposed to find. This supposed villain is revealed to be a female version of Loki, which brutally murders some of the time police and steals time bombs to enact what is basically a terrorist bombing on the timeline to weaken it and create a large amount of time branches to destabilize the TVA. After she is united with Loki, however, she too all of a sudden becomes highly cartoonish. What was a legitimately intimidating and mysterious presence loses all bite because now the audience is supposed to like her. So she needs to be funny and cool because complex characters are too hard to write or something. She basically just exudes a lot of I'm a Disney princess, please cosplay me energy. In this regard, the show itself seems to just be way too aware of Loki's popularity as a character and how well liked he is in our world that they got lazy in trying to actually develop him into someone mature and interesting in the show. Lastly, the entire internal logic of the show seems childish. The way scenes are set up and play out, things are brought up and dismissed. There are examples of this in the second episode already. At the start of episode 2, Loki has started working for the TVA, but we aren't shown how he was convinced to do so, how much he knows about his job, or any scenes of him learning at all. The character, just like in the first episode, simply skips to the point of where the writers want him to be at any given time. This very much acts like the logic of a children's show where nobody really cares about consistency, and the characters just become what is required of them in every scene. There's also the scene of Loki wasting the TVA's time in the very same episode, for absolutely no reason, which we are then told he did to help out Sylvie, the female Loki. Which... why? That makes absolutely no sense, she wasn't even there. <laughs> Uh, similarly, there's also how Sylvie seemingly at random decides to either kill or keep TVA agents alive, with the one she hypnotized being traumatized and repeatedly saying it's all real over and over again. What is this referring to exactly? The memories of her former life which were erased by the TVA? If so, why did nobody else have such a visceral reaction to finding out about her true nature? The only reason this played out the way it did is to again make Sylvie more ominous before quickly dropping that notion. So, considering all of these examples, and I'm sure there's multiple ones more, Loki just feels like watching a kid's show. Not necessarily a bad one, just not a very deep or detailed one. And considering my next point, maybe even a harmful one. Oh, Craig is a cock shit. Yes! <sighs> I can't believe I'm explaining this in 2021. So, before you click off the video, let me tell you that there's absolutely no reason for this to get messy. First of all, this isn't a political video. What I'm about to say isn't a political statement or a political opinion. It has nothing to do with politics. It's really just science. It's shit humanity has known for thousands of years, maybe even more. It's not, okay? It's, oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. So, to start off, here are some relevant facts for the discussion. Sex defines the genitals a person is born with. Sex is what you are assigned to at birth based on the combination of chromosomes you have in your body. Some people, namely intersex people, are born with a combination of genitals which does not fit into the binary, oh my god I said the bad word, of male and female. That is because these two categories are created in order to categorize people. This isn't an opinion of mine. This isn't something evil or bad. This is just how humans work. You are born and based on a combination of chromosomes you have, you are assigned male or female. Usually, when somebody doesn't fit into either male or female, there can be done surgeries and procedures right at birth that make the person fit more neatly into that. Because that is how we handle this stuff, okay? So, sci scientifically accurately, male and female, the sex you're assigned at birth describes the combination of chromosomes present in someone which leads to the formation of said genitals. While bodies may be changed through surgery, sex cannot be changed. It is assigned at birth. Now, gender is a personal expression. It is a social construct. Just like countries, money, traditions and many others, it is an invention of human society to categorize others more easily. A gender can be male or female, but it can also be outside of more well-known expressions, such as non-binary. 
Ultimately, however, it doesn't and shouldn't matter. What a person chooses to identify themselves with, since it's merely a personal affair. These are scientific facts. This isn't a political statement. This distinction I've just explained is something countless cultures all throughout human history have recognized again and again in the past, which have led them to gain a higher understanding of human nature and the human condition. A few examples include ancient Greece, ancient Rome, Byzantium, and wouldn't you know it, the Vikings and the Norse god Loki. If any of this is a surprise to you, I am sorry, I sincerely am, because it means that you were likely subjugated to a vast amount of anti-trans propaganda, which seems to be particularly in fashion right now. Many countries are currently in the process of banning free speech regarding trans topics, or outright banning being trans. This always was and will always be a human rights violation. To give you an example that I just came up with, I was born in Italy. I cannot change the fact that I was born there, but when I was 18, I needed to sign papers confirming that I view myself as being Italian. I may, however, choose to go to live in Germany, and after living there for a few years, get papers that state that I am German. This doesn't change the fact that I was born in Italy, but for all the intents and purposes and ways that matter, I am now German. There, I explained it. Great. So, how does all of this relate back to Loki? Well, Loki in Lorsch mythology is what we would today define as gender fluid. Sometimes a man, sometimes a woman, sometimes sitting comfortably in between. Loki, other than other gods and heroes of the Norse mythology, four included, doesn't just like dressing up as other genders, he feels like them too. And through his shape-shifting powers was able to live different parts of his life, exactly expressing whatever he felt like inside at that time. Look in the Marvel comics is exactly the same. <gasps> I know, wow. Loki in the MCU, however, that's a very different story. Fundamental misunderstanding of the character aside, Loki in the MCU is decidedly a man. Everybody uses male pronouns with him, he clearly presents as male, and none of his disguises or trickery ever include anything that makes us think different before. Now, as I'm sure you might have heard, there was an uproar after the first episode of Loki, because in it, on Loki's file, after he got arrested, it says that his sex is fluid. Which is accurate to his character in the comics, Loki is a sexless shapeshifter. What this isn't, however, is LGBT representation. Shortly put, a thing such as a fluid sex obviously doesn't exist in real life. People can't just change their bodies on a whim. Hell, changing one's gender is also an arduous and time-intensive process. So for the show about Loki to acknowledge this fantastical element about him isn't a baby step for representation. It's just, well, nothing. Loki's sex has always been fluid. <laughs> You know what else has been fluid? His gender. <laughs> Since the moment he was created in Norse mythology and in Marvel Comics. The crucial point here is that trans people and those with fluid genders actually exist. And this would and should have been a golden opportunity to represent them. And don't give me any of the usual excuses, please. Disney Plus is in the unique position of being a service only offered in countries in which being gay is legal. Therefore, there would be no financial or reputational repercussions for Disney, which Argo makes this transphobic. Oh, and don't worry, I've seen that one scene in episode 3 in which the two Lokis are so shortly revealed that they've had relationships with both men and women. Bravo! Wow! Listen, Disney, uh, Lord knows my friends from college have experimented plenty with both genders, and let me tell you, that doesn't make them any less straight. All of this adds insult to injury, when instead of giving us any form of LGBTQ relationship for any of the Lokis in the show, the main character ends up falling in love with a female version of himself. You guys really prefer incest over any LGBT stuff. And yes, guys, fucking a female version of yourself is incest. It's literally your genetic makeup. It's like wanting to have sex with your sister. God damn it, Marvel, Mobius was right there! <laughs> the gist of the matter is this. In our current situation, in which trans people are being attacked and getting their rights taken away by the minute, portraying a trans character as not trans isn't a political neutral statement. In fact, it very much is an aggressively far-right message. Here we have a transgender fluid character which we chose to swiftly untrans because we wanted to. Take that, liberals! 
I think the person I'm most disappointed in, however, is Tom Hiddleston himself. He in part wrote the show. Throughout its shooting, he even acted as a consultant on Marvel and Loki lore. He literally prides himself on being an expert on the comics and character. So what? Does he just not know the difference between sex and gender? Does he simply not care? I mean, if he understood anything about Loki, the show wouldn't constantly, and I do mean constantly, in every episode, hammer home that Loki is always a man, and will always be a man, and Sylvie is a woman, and that makes her special over and over and over and over again. Jesus Christ, it's in every single episode. Fuck! <laughs> To my absolute surprise, Loki doesn't really suffer from the same problems as the other Marvel shows. Trying to link the show to the MCU doesn't do it a disservice. Not as much, at least. Well, WandaVision completely crumbled under the weight of the MCU catching up on its last episode, and Falcon Winter Soldier seemed to be more concerned with setup than coherence half of the time, Loki is a... Uh, well, it's, it's basically just setup. <laughs> Other than the other shows I've mentioned, all Loki as a TV show really is, is a tie-in to the MCU. It doesn't really have any standalone qualities. Which puts the creators in the awkward spot of making a major Marvel product living off of its connection with the others without any other Marvel actors appearing in it. It's my biggest nightmare regarding these shows personified. <laughs> and I mean, if all the show is made for in the end is setting up the Marvel multiverse, I really don't know what their plan was here. Uh, this is clear as day by the last episode. This entire show was just a bunch of waffling before the actual big event that changes the franchise. But god, that's a lame idea for a show! It does somehow echo the theme of the show a bit. Loki being unable to evolve out of being an untrustworthy villain character, even though he doesn't act like that ever, he inevitably was hurling towards something he couldn't change. Sylvie unleashing the multiverse. I mean, when it happens in the finale, it is visually impressive and in a very good looking set like the rest of the show, but WandaVision could have done all of this multiverse stuff much better with much more coherent plot and characters. Loki is then probably supposed to fulfill the trope of the fake out main character that ends up not having much influence over the plot at all. But so many movies and TV shows manage to do this without being so extremely messy. Add to that that this same moment is supposed to be the big introduction of Marvel's next major antagonist, Kang the Conqueror, which we are introduced with by a frankly obnoxious performance by Jonathan Majors that spends the entirety of the episodes snickering and giggling to show us how crazy and quirky he is. I honestly don't know which character I find the most annoying, and I don't even blame the actors, but god damn, if this is the material they are given, now I'm seriously worried about Kang's role as a major villain. Also, are you serious with the apple-eating villain tempting a couple with a moral choice? How on the nose do you want your Adam and Eve to be? At least Nier Automata had did something creative with it. All this to say that we truly are in a new era of the MCU. The Marvel Corona Universe. Let me explain what I think is going on. Timeline different than our own, Marvel didn't need to rewrite literally everything they had planned, and people didn't have to wait more than a year for new content. Now, however, Marvel both had to completely butcher and rewrite all of their stories because they needed to be newly calibrated according to the timeline of their release, but they also have fans, including me, who have been waiting for way too long for the plot to progress and are getting impatient. Therefore, their new releases seem rushed and overly concerned with tying in to show us that there's still a progression and a larger overarching plot. If you want proof for any of this, despite Marvel insisting that the virus didn't have a large impact, you need not to look further than Loki. Scenes often feel like they are stemming from different versions of an unfinished script. Mobius likes Loki, then doesn't, he trusts him, and in the next scene he's almost afraid of him. The show's tone zigzags between kid-friendly and needlessly dark and gruesome, while at the same time ping-ponging with heavy topics such as class disparity, the murder of poor people and disastrous causes by global warming, while at the same time saying absolutely nothing about anything. So yeah, that's it. Loki's kinda... not that great. <laughs> Hopefully they'll step it up in the next season. Um, yeah, I'm working on a video on near replicant and then on near reincarnation. Mm -hmm. 
so that's cool. And uh, also, I'm, 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 I'm gonna continue to do music and probably also other weird videos as well. Okay, thanks for watching, bye!